What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with the SAB Raw 500 build series. So we got the all new SAB Raw 500 on the table here. Huge thank you to Brian. Thank you for letting me build your Raw 500 and make videos on it. Set up on this model, we will be running the Axon fly barless unit. Of course, the X Nova specific 4020 2Y 900 kV shaft B just for the Raw 500. So the X Nova motor is specifically designed for the Raw 500 kV and size. Hobby wing 120 amp ESC, and we are running Theta servos. So we are running the Theta 988 on cyclic. So we have three of those. We are running the 982 on tail. So we got everything on the table. We're gonna get this off table, get the kit opened up. Let's get started. First step of our build is going to be getting the main shaft ready to go into blocks. And you're gonna have this little main shaft collar lock is what they call it. Both sides, one screw is gonna go in from one side, threads there, screw. So they're gonna be opposite of each other. And they're gonna go into these two holes right here on the shaft. The shaft that had the top of the shaft has two holes. That'll be for the head block. The one hole at the bottom is going for the main gear or pulley. So we're gonna slide this up. We're gonna line up our holes. Two and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on our screw, and we want our screws to go in opposing of each other. We're gonna come back with this screw and then tighten both down, both already with Loctite. So now we got both of our screws in, your shaft will look like this. Now we are gonna come back with the top bearing block assembly here, and we're going to slide our shaft in this way till it bottoms out. And then they give you two shims here. So this is your bottom cap. This is going to slide onto here and you want the shorter lip side up, the side with the bearing facing up, that is going to slide and you are going to line your screws up here. You're gonna tighten this down and check for play. I can feel a little bit of play. So I'm gonna add one shim. I have my one shim added. I'm going to reinstall this with the bearing up, line our holes up, two and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on our screw here. One started, snug it down. Second one started, snug it down. Third one started and snug it down go back and tighten all three of them up now. Now we are going to spin it, make sure it spins freely, and we are going to push up and down and check for play. There is no play, it spins freely, so now I am happy with one shim. We are gonna come back with this plate now, we're gonna install our little serial number. It is going to fit into this spot right here. One and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on the little countersunk screw, tighten it down. So now our plate is installed. Now we're gonna bring our bearing and main shaft assembly. It is going to drop down into this hole right here and it will line up. So it'll look like that in the bottom, that on the top. Two and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw, tighten them down. There is three of them. Number two, number three. Now tighten all three all the way down. Now this assembly is completed. Now we're gonna come back with what they're calling a clamp mount. And we're gonna take our main plate. There's four screws back here. You're gonna be going off of one, two, three, four holes. Line up your holes, two millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw. Get your first one started. Just snug it down a little bit. Come back with your second screw. I like to do my outsides first so it holds everything in place. Snug that one down and then install your two middle screws. Now tighten all four of your screws up and it will look like this when you are done. Now we are going to assemble the main gear. So we're going to take some of the SAB one-way bearing grease and we are just going to push a little bit down inside of here. I'm going to take a T-pin. Got actually too much. That's okay. So now that we got our one-way bearing greased, set that aside for a second. We're going to take our tail belt pulley and we're going to take our sleeve. We want our hole facing down because it's gonna go through this hole right here. So we're just going to line that up for a second. Take a shim. They give you two if need be. I'm gonna put one on and see how it feels or take it out if I need to. And we're gonna take our main gear and we want the longer side to go down towards the gear, the pulley. We're gonna slide this through. We're going to wipe off any excess. We are going to now grab our main mother plate and main shaft, we're gonna take a little bit of that 
one-way bearing grease and I'm going to wipe it on the shaft here. We are going to take this shim, slide it down, make sure you got some grease on your shaft. I use one-way bearing grease for this since it will be going through the one-way bearing. Now we are gonna take our whole pulley and main gear assembly, main pulley assembly, and we are going to slide it up and line up that hole two and a half millimeter driver through it down lock nut on the back side no loctite tighten it up grab your front servo mount anti-rotation bracket and your anti-rotation bracket is going to sit on the outside this is the front this is the back you want that scoop part to face the main shaft so we're going to take our one and a half millimeter driver retaining compound on our screw and tighten these up now you got all three of them tightened down we can now install the servo mount to the mother plate two and a half millimeter driver loctite on our screw we're going to go in through these holes right here get our screw started and do the same on the other one tighten it all the way down so now our front servo mount is installed we can move on to the rear servo mount grab your rear servo mount two millimeter driver Loctite on our screw here, and we're gonna get both of our screws started and tightened down. Fully tighten both screws down. So now we are ready to install our servos. So now we are gonna move on to getting our servo horns ready to be installed. We are running the SAB servo horns, and they have little marks here that say all of the sizes, 15, 18, and 21. You want 15 millimeters from the center hole to your ball on these particular servos they're nice and thick on these horns so we're going to go to the 15 mark get our ball started tighten it all the way down and be careful not to over tighten if you want to use a drop of ca you can as a thread lock or a nut on the back side since this doesn't stick out far enough we will use a drop of ca and we're going to put our servo horn onto our servos on the cyclic you want your servo horn to be 90 degrees to your servo on the elevator servo you want it to be straight across 90 degrees so get all three of your horns done and get your servos arms mounted to your servos so now we got all three of our cyclic servos done loctited our screws put a drop of ca on our threads so that way it acts like a loctite for plastic but don't use loctite use ca now we need to install our servos the front back servo is going to go in just like this it's going to go in from the outside down you want the splines if you're looking at it to the right side you want the ball to the left side and then your front servos are going to go in horns 90 slip the horn in one servo here and then you're going to do the same on the other side with the back servo here or all three servos doesn't matter you're going to take your two millimeter driver with a carbon plate loctite on your screw you're going to get that screw started and you're going to have two screws with a carbon plate on each servo do that for the back and the front two servos all of our servos installed all of our screws are loctited the main plate assembly is finished so we can set that aside now we need to assemble our battery latch if you've built the raw 420 then this will look very familiar to you so we're going to grab this base pin here and we want the pin side to our left we're going to take our spring now the bigger side of the spring on first and then this little tiny shim and we're going to slide that on now one thing that i like to do is take a little bit of micro lube on my finger and i like to put some micro lube inside of this assembly right here just to give on the spring side just to give it something to slide into inside the base now we're going to take our base flat side here we're going to slide this assembly through hold it down we are going to take the latch itself and we're also going to put a little bit of that micro lube on the outside of here then we're going to set that down one and a half millimeter driver loctite on our screw get that screw started we're going to hold this whole assembly and we're going to tighten this down if you have a hard time tightening it, you can rotate this pin and there is a hole that you can stick like a T-pin or something through. Now that is tightened, loctited. We're going to just move it back and forth and make sure it is working like it should and that micro lube will help keep everything lubed up. So now grab your left frame side, grab your battery latch. We're gonna install it from the outside. It's going into these two holes. So flip it over come in from the inside of the frame rail here, two millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw and get your screw started. 
run it all the way down and do the same on the second one. Now that our battery latch is installed, Loctited, tightened down, we are now going to install these aluminum and they are going to go right here and right here. So you want the bigger side to go into that hole, the threaded side for your countersunk screw to go just like that. One and a half millimeter driver, countersunk screw, lock tight, tighten it all the way up. Then we're gonna do the exact same on this side. Put your piece in, lock tight on your screw, one and a half millimeter driver, tighten it all the way up. Now that is installed. Looks like that from the back side. Now we need to install our canopy cup itself. So your canopy cup is going to look like this. And we want to put threads on that very fine section right there. So we're gonna take some of our Loctite. We're just gonna put a little dab like that on there. And then we're gonna need a five millimeter Allen and a 12 millimeter socket. So a good old Pittsburgh cheap socket set, use it for doing this kind of stuff. You're gonna slide it in through the outside. It's gonna sit down into the frame. And then we're gonna come back with our nut and we want the open end to go towards the frame, get it started till it snugs up. That's when we're gonna come back now with our Allen wrench itself. We're gonna put our five millimeter Allen wrench, then grab our 12 millimeter socket, tighten it down. Don't go overboard because this is aluminum, you can break it. Next step, we are going to install our battery slide. So this is a plastic battery slide that is going to go on the inside of the mainframe. And you are also going to have two of these hex. We'll put those on in a second. So what we wanna do is we're going after this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole for right now, and then we'll mount this to the mother plate. So first thing we're gonna do is we want our battery release mechanism to go through this slot, and we want this screw hole to go through this first screw hole. So we're gonna line this up. We're gonna come back with our two millimeter driver with our self-tapping screws, and we are gonna go through here and get a screw started. Now we got one started. Now we're gonna come back and we are going to go through this hole right here. Screw it all the way down. Now that we got that one done, we are gonna come back and we are gonna go after this one here, which is this second hole from the back. Two millimeter driver, screw it all the way down. So then we're gonna come back with our frame spacer and they're gonna fit into corresponding hexes on the actual frame. It's gonna stop or onto the battery slide. It's gonna stop at the frame Loctite on our screw, and it's a button screw, two millimeter driver, tighten this one up. We're gonna come back with our back one, same thing, slide it down till it stops, same screw, get it started, tighten it up. So now that we got our last one in, a little tip for you guys, if you're having a hard time getting these screws started, loosen up the plastic screws that hold the tray into place, just loosen them a little bit, then get your screws, tighten them in, and then tighten them back up. That way everything stays nice and straight. Now we are going to take this little rubber part, which they're calling a canopy center. You will notice that there is a countersunk side and a flat side. We're gonna come back, there's only one of these little countersunk screws, one and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw, and it's gonna go into this front hole insert right here we're going to tighten that down Just don't go overboard because it is rubber and you can pull the screw right through now this part is done and we can grab the mother plate now with our mother plate assembly here we're going to be going off of four screw holes on the plate and three in the back on this plate so you're going to take your side frame you're going to drop it over and you can line up your holes here. So we need these two holes in the front to match and then all the holes will match. So we're just gonna get one screw started so we can hold this in place. We're gonna put our beauty washer on our screw, two millimeter driver, get that screw started. Now that we got that front screw started, we're going to line our back up here and we're using two millimeter driver, but the larger countersunk screws, get that started. There's gonna be three countersunk screws and four of your regular screws with a beauty washer. Get all those in and lock tight it and tighten down. So now that we got this side done, you're gonna grab your other frame side and you're gonna repeat the exact same process on the other side, exception of door battery latch. So go ahead and get that done. So now that we got both sides done, we can set this aside and move on to building the head. So now we need to assemble our radius arms. So we're going to take the smaller 
bearings, retaining compound, put a dab around the outside, push it into place. I like to give it a spin and then wipe off the excess with rubbing alcohol on a paper towel. And then you're gonna do the same on the front bearing, on the other bearing, retaining compound around the bearing, push it into place, give it a spin so you can help get the retaining compound evenly around it, wipe off the excess, and then the exact same for the back bearings, retaining compound, put your bearing into place, push it in, wipe off the excess, and we're gonna take this little brass sleeve right here, drop that into place, make sure it is straight up and down, Retaining compound around our bearing here. Push that into place, just like that. Rubbing alcohol, wipe off your excess. And both of them will be assembled the same way. So now we're gonna come back with our screw. We're gonna be going with the SAB facing us through the smaller bearing. We're gonna take a small shim, slide it down. Then we're gonna come back with our arm. Remember this is plastic, no Loctite, no retaining compound. Get your thread started, tighten it up, but don't go overboard to where you crack or break the arm, just to where it stops. Watch it, watch it, and stop it right there. Feel it, it should be free and smooth, and you're gonna do that for both of your arms. So now our next step is going to be assembling our push rods here. So now, something SAB did on the 500 that I like is that it is a left and right-handed thread with a spot for this little wrench that they give you so you can adjust your turnbuckles. Very, very nice touch. So great job to SAB for that. So we're just going to take a little pair of needle nose, clamp it down in the middle. Remember, one side is left, one side is right. I don't know which one is which. It doesn't say. So we're just going to push it and get our thread started. We're going to go right first. And I actually got it right on the first try. So that's my right th handed thread. We're going to take our SAB driver and turn this ball link all the way down. We're gonna flip it over and the other side will be left-handed threads. So now we're gonna take our other link, left-handed thread, get it started. And then we're going to do the same on the other one as well. And we want an overall diameter of 46 millimeters. So we're gonna adjust both of our linkages until we have a overall diameter of 46 from end to end. So we got both of our linkages done, 46 millimeter overall diameter. So we're gonna set those aside. We're gonna move on to the head block. So now the Raw 500 has a new head dampener design for SAB and you have just Durlin sleeve that slides in and you have your O-ring. So you're gonna put an O-ring into the first groove here and then you're gonna have an O-ring on the second groove. So it's gonna look like this when you are done. Now these are 70-70. That is for sport and 3D flight. If you're an extreme hard smack 3D person, you're gonna wanna do 90 and 90. So we are running 70, 70 on this one. So we're gonna do both of them the same way. So now we're gonna take a little bit of micro lube on our finger here, just enough to get our O-rings lubed up. And we're gonna take the micro lube. We're just gonna put it around the outside of our O-rings here. We're gonna take our head block and we're just going to push this assembly all the way down. Wipe off the excess, take this one, same thing, get some micro lube around all of our O-rings. And then we're gonna take this assembly and this one O-ring doesn't wanna stay all the way on. We're gonna slide this assembly down. So now our dampeners are installed. We're gonna take our feathering shaft. We're gonna use that micro lube that was left on our fingers, rub the shaft. We are going to slide our feathering shaft through the head block. Make sure we don't get any in the threads. Now our head block is ready for the blade grips. Now we are going to assemble our thrust bearings in the blade grip. So I have them laid out here. I already went and greased my bearings. So you need the, I use Micro Lube GL261. I filled my bearings full of grease like packing a wheel bearing. Now we have our first set here is set up blade grip bolt smaller ID, thrust bearing, larger ID, spacer, and then your blade grip would be back here. So we're gonna move our bolts out of the way. Remember to clean your screws with rubbing alcohol. So we're gonna grab our smaller ID, cup side towards you, our thrust bearing with the open side towards the blade grip, close side towards the first one. Then we're gonna grab our larger ID. We're gonna grab our shim, and we're gonna take a blade grip. We are going to drop that down into there. 
and then assemble the second one. Smaller ID first, open side towards us, thrust bearing, open side towards us, larger ID, open side towards the bolt, shim, bearing, or blade grip, and drop this whole assembly down into there. And then I like to just walk around and get rid of any of the excess grease. So now we're gonna take our head block with our shaft, micro lube on the shaft. Now, it tells you in the manual to not install any shims for the first 20 to 30 flights or just check after we assemble, make sure that it is solid. We're gonna drop our first blade grip down, careful not to push our thrust bearings out. Then we're gonna take our screw, already cleaned in Loctite, three millimeter, or cleaned in alcohol, three millimeter driver, Loctite on the screw. We're gonna get this side started. So we're just gonna get it started and we're going to spin it down. Now we're gonna take our next blade grip. We are gonna drop it down, get it to go through that thrust bearing, come back with our second screw, Loctite already on it, get it started. Now we're gonna take both of our, now we're gonna take both of our three millimeter drivers and we're going to tighten this all the way down. Make sure both screws are fully tightened and torqued down. Coming back with two three millimeter Allen so I can get a good tighten, tighten it down. So now our head is fully tightened down. We're gonna grab the block and spin the grips. Make sure they are free and smooth. We're gonna give it some pull test, make sure there's no excess play or wobble. Now our head block and blade grips are installed. We need to install our arms. These are a composite plastic material that are sacrificial designed to break in a crash. Two and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on our screw, get that started into the blade grip. Tighten it all the way up, make sure it is aligned. Don't go too crazy tight, but tighten it down. You don't wanna split it. We're gonna do the same on this blade grip. Two and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on our screw. Get that screw started, tighten it up. So now our arms are on and we need to come back with our ball ends. Now in the manual, they do not tell you to lock tight these, but when you look inside of your arms, that is metal threads in there. So I am going to lock tight them because I don't want them to come loose in flight. So drop of lock tight on our threads. We don't need a lot. Get that screw started, tighten it all the way up and do the same on the other side. Now that we got all of our blade grips bolted, everything tight and we're gonna install our radius arm. We want SAB facing up and SAB facing out. So we are gonna come back one and a half millimeter driver, Loctite already applied to our screw here and we're going off of this first bolt hole right here in the head block. So I'm just gonna get this started. No washers or anything. We're gonna tighten this all the way up, torque it down. Be careful, it's still a one and a half millimeter screw. Free and smooth, do the same on the other side. Now with both of our arms on, our radius arm just should look like this. I do love that SAB has taken some weight savings into account and they have taken a lot of material out of the head block, blade grip, something different from them. Now we're gonna take our push rods here, our linkages, and we are going to pop one onto each side. Remember SAB always facing out, just like that. Now our head block and blade grips, our entire head assembly is fully ready to go on the helicopter. Before we install the head, we have to build the swash plate. So all of your balls for the swash plate are going to be the same all the way around, exception of this tab right here, which is your anti-rotation pin. I do not tighten or lock tight this until we slide it on the helicopter. So I'm gonna leave that out. One and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on our balls. And we're gonna go all the way around and you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're gonna have seven linkages or seven balls you're gonna have seven swash plate balls all the way around, Loctite them all down. So we got all of our swash plate balls installed, Loctited down. So now we're gonna take the main frame of the helicopter here, and we're gonna take a little bit of micro lube on our finger. And we are going to just rub the shaft down with some micro lube before putting the swash plate on. Now we're gonna take our swash plate, drop it in from the top, let it fall. And this is why I said I wait to put the anti-rotation pin on. Now I'm gonna take my anti-rotation pin, slide it through my anti-rotation bracket, hold it into place, dab a Loctite, slide my swash plate up, get it started and tighten it down. Now that our anti-rotation pin is tightened down, we can take a little bit more micro lube, top of the main shaft. Now we are going to need these two bolt holes right here. One there, one there. Take our head block, move everything out of the way, and we are going to line up with our first bolt hole, that hole right in the top. So just push it, spin it. Now that we have lined that up there, we're gonna put the 
bolt end through this side, two and a half millimeter driver, push our screw through. We're gonna come out on the other side right here where our lock nut is going to go. So no Loctite. And then we're going to tighten this screw all the way up. Now we got that one done. We're gonna come back, same thing on this side, screw right through the bottom, tighten it up. So now we got both of our head block bolts in. We are going to start popping the linkages on. Your radius arms go to the straight part of the swash plate here. So pop that on. We're gonna flip it around. We're going to pop this one on. And we're gonna take the linkages from our blade grips and they are going to go to the 90 side of the ball here. Remember SAB facing out. And then do the same on this one. Now make sure everything moves free and smoothly. Our head is assembled, our swash plate is assembled, and we can move on to the linkages. So now we are going to assemble our push rods from the servo to the swash plate. They give you two different options here. So you will notice one has a turnbuckle style, the other one is shorter. And the reason for this is depending on the size of your cyclic servos. So they give you in the manual, measuring from the servo spline, the center of the spline to the top of your servo. If it is 14 millimeters, 14 to 15, these are 14 and a half, then you will use this style horn right here, or push rod right here. If it is 11 to 14 millimeters from the center of your spline to the top of your servo case, then you will use this style right here. So now you will notice also that the back servo push rod is longer than the front one so the back one doesn't matter it is only the same size so we are going to assemble the push rod i'm going to hold the push rod right here this is a left and right handed thread I'm not sure which one's which it doesn't say so just try it and if it won't start then go the other way so this one is left handed so i will take my little sab ball tool that when you build a lot of kits, you get a lot of them. And then I will just turn this one all the way down. We want an overall diameter of 55 millimeters. Then you will flip it around and you will get your other side started. That's the right-handed thread. And then tighten that one down for an overall diameter of 55 millimeters. So now we have all three of our push rods assembled. You're gonna assemble your fronts the same way as you do the back. All three of them are left and right-handed thread. The rear, you want to be at 55, approximately 55 millimeters. And the fronts you want to be approximately 42 and a half to 43. I have them set at 43 millimeters. So let's install these on the helicopter. So now we're gonna start with the back first. Of course, SAB logo facing out, SAB facing out, they're 180 of each other. So we are going to pop the one on our servo horn first. So we're going to grab our ball link pliers and pop it on. Then we are going to move our servo back down, pop it on the swash plate. And of course, make sure SAB is facing out. So now our rear servo horn is done, servo arm. And then we're gonna do the same on the front ones. We're gonna just pop these on. And then you will notice that we need to twist it to fit. So we're just gonna do a half turn, pop it on, rotate the helicopter, same thing. Pop it on the bottom, come up to the swash plate. We need to do a half turn and pop it on. So now all of our servo horns and linkages are done. And a little note that I just read in the manual, because if you can tell here, our swash plate, our arms are not 90 degrees to our swash plate. So we have negative pitch. It says in the manual, if you have to cut one millimeter off of each one of your links in the front to do that, to get a proper adjustment or use the little silver ones that are included, however you would like to do it. I am going to cut the ball links a little bit so that way I still have the turnbuckle for adjustment because that is very nice. Now the next thing we are going to do is we're going after these three holes. One, two, and three. So one, two, and three. And we're going to be using these little aluminum nut certs and these black plastic bolts. Now in the manual, they're gonna tell you to use a little bit of epoxy. I am going to use a dab of CA as a thread lock. You will also notice that there is flat spots. Those flat spots go into this hole. We slide it up into place. It'll slide in. I'm going to use a dab of medium CA, holding it with my finger, just a dab. You don't need much. I'm gonna take the plastic nut. It doesn't matter which side goes on which. Get it started. Now I'll come back with a 10 millimeter socket or wrench and don't go overboard. It's just plastic. 
and then do the same for this one this one and on the other side when you are done it'll look just like this we got both sides done so now we are going to grab our frame side we are going to go after the nuts that we just put in is what our frame side screws are going to go through so we need a two millimeter driver loctite on our screw get your screw started put your back one your front one your middle one on both sides tighten them all the way up so now that we got both of our frame sides in, we are going to install these little foam canopy protectors. So they are going to go on each side and they are going to sit just like this. Push it down and it will be the same on the other side. Now we can move on to our skids, which is very nice that they are pre-built. We are gonna take our skids, drop them right down on the helicopter, just like that. Come in, one screw on each side, lock tight on our screws, because they are going in to a insert rib nut. So you're gonna put two on each side, two millimeter driver, tighten them all the way down. There you guys go, part one of the SAB Raw 580 build series. So we're gonna start part two and get that done for you guys. It is building extremely well. SAB really thought of everything on this helicopter. I really like the one-piece skid design, the simplicity in the frame, the mother plate that integrates everything together, and traditional motor style, battery tray, the new tail belt tensioner gauge that'll go in there, but they did a great job. Can't wait to get this thing done and fly it. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching the first part of the SAB Raw 500 build series. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Take care and have a great day.